Hi folks, it's uh, Thinking Slow here. Uh, we have quite an upbeat uh, episode uh, today. It's about the war propaganda. Um, our general feeling is that it's uh, wearing off quite quickly the sort of manufactured consent and enthusiasm for this war. So, uh, of course, there will be some people that still see this as the good guys versus the bad guys. Um, and you'll get a bit of this um, watching a sporting event, you know, I'm for the blue and yellow team. Uh, but uh, apart from, from that grouping, uh, many others are actually quite sceptical about this whole narrative that we're being told uh, and the huge amounts of money that are being sent over to Ukraine. And we're going to look at some um, tweets where you can still see the ratioing where the number of comments is massively higher than the number of likes. And that's giving you an idea that uh, just people are not buying this stuff. And uh, let's look at a couple of those. And uh, as we said now, we've got the funding pages set up this week, um, one on Patreon, which is here, and the other one on Tippy. And what we're going to do is uh, part of this episode will be uh, through the normal uh, channel, but the second part will be for the patrons who will get uh, early view of the concluding section of this uh, program. So. Uh, if you want to watch the whole thing through, um, it would be good to help us out by becoming a member uh, and being being a sponsor through Patreon. So there'll, there'll be a break halfway through. OK, good. So here is um, probably the most important tweet, uh, which got very heavily ratioed. Uh, this is Senator Ted Cruz, that generally most sort of uh, conservative, small c, uh, people will quite like you know he seems quite a likable guy with with a lot of sensible comments about the border and other things but he came out uh, pro war that we must send this 40 billion dollars and this was uh, you know this is quite a big ratioing so 5000 likes how how many of those are real i don't know but uh, 20000 comments virtually every single one of them is negative and we're going to look at a couple of them, which are good examples of, um, you know, regular folk just not buying this. Uh, they just don't buy the national security angle. They don't buy the amounts involved. Um, and they especially given the domestic priorities in the US. So let's just have a look at a couple of those uh, comments because they give a good idea of, of what people are really thinking. Uh, so here's one. So. Spending money we don't have during a time of open borders, labor disruptions, food shortages and inflation on things not in our national interest in a way that makes the entire world at far greater risk of nuclear war or even just prolonged conflict makes us safer. Uh, I think there should be a question mark at the end, but I think you get the you get the message here and that's had 12,000 likes. Um, and uh, here's another one. Um, with all due respect, Senator Cruz, because generally I do like you, stop giving my money away. We keep running ourselves into the ground with frivolous spending, which compromises our security. Until our national debt is zero, do not give a cent away. This is not sustainable. And uh, that, that's fair enough now, because uh, US uh, national debt now is somewhere about Second World War levels. Uh, on, the, on the federal debt to GDP ratio and um, that situation is likely to get worse with the insane spending uh, that's going on now so uh, Xander Bose is 100% correct here you know this is not sustainable and uh, flinging money like that around is, is really unbelievable the sums involved and uh, you know I think the, the comments uh, to Mr. Cruz or Senator Cruz actually reflect, you know, the real priorities. And quite often I'm sceptical about these um, surveys, but this one does seem to be reasonably accurate. Uh, top concerns of, of Americans, uh, you know, inflation, health care, violent crime, gun violence, federal budget deficit. And the list goes on, but nowhere is there we must achieve a regime change in Russia this is, you know, to be certain, purely a deep state Washington fixation. Uh, they've wanted this for a long time. Uh, we had in the other reports the work from the Rand Corporation. This is a classic disconnect between a, a deep state elite, and I use the word elite very, very loosely because I don't consider most of these people elite, 
um, and they their interests are completely out of kilter with what the ordinary folk think and uh, as is quite often the case the thinking of the ordinary folk is actually much clearer uh, and much more in line with US interests than what the deep state Washington folks are up to. So let's, um, let's look at one of these uh, so-called members of the deep state Washington leap. Um, this is uh, Anders Osland who, uh, as you probably will know if you've looked at any of our Ukraine material, we highlighted very early on based on our own knowledge that he is basically unhinged and he will write a lot of crazy things um, also against Ukraine and I think you saw that we managed to forensically uncover a lot of the things he was writing in 2021 uh, highly insulting towards uh, President Zelensky but you know now he airbrushed that out and now he's on to another another track with equally erratic messages um, and then finally one of the UK alternative medias uh, woke up maybe a month and a half after we covered this um, uh, and also spotted that he's quite erratic, this guy, and he's writing in a tweet uh, from the 20th of April. Um, this is really what he wrote. My humble advice to NATO would be, number three, bomb relevant Russian cities preventatively to make sure that Putin does not use chemical arms or nukes. Wake up, we are at this stage. Now, you know, it's pretty obvious he's calling for initiation of World War Three. Um, I mean, the guy is literally unhinged. He, I know for a fact he absolutely hates Russia. And, you know, the reality is he's deep into these Washington policy circles via his role at the Atlantic Council. And, you know, one way or another, I think ordinary people are understanding, you know, these guys are, I mean, just saying hotheads is kind of generous. It's actually increasing the risk of war and making this whole situation worse. And every tweet you see from him now is discouraging any attempts at any kind of ceasefire. You know, these, these guys are dangerous. And uh, unfortunately, as I said, they're quite close to decision making in, in, the, in the US, in Washington. And, you know, the ultimate irony is, of course, he's, although he's sitting in Washington, he's actually Swedish. So neither Russian nor Ukrainian nor American, uh, but uh, that doesn't stop him dragging us all into ever-increasing conflict. Uh, okay, so that was that one. Then um, I think we covered also in one of the other videos that um, I think all of us, I mean us for certain, uh, are getting more and more jaded with everything the government tells us. I mean, as I've said before, this channel was set up to expose the falsehoods in the COVID statistics and of course, now we're extremely skeptical about anything the government tells us. And in foreign policy, if anything, the situation's even worse. If you trace back through all of these uh, narratives that have been used to uh, manufacture consent for war, all of these stories were either completely fake or uh, at best twisted. So I think a lot of people now may be also jaded about believing what we're told. I mean, the, the good guys versus bad guys narrative just doesn't hold uh, in Ukraine. There's, there's a big gray area. And as much as the, um, the mainstream media tries to make this a binary story, it just isn't like that. And, and I think people understand that as well. Uh, and of course, one of the key cont contributions to that has been the fact that Professor Mearsheimer's video has been viewed 27 million times on YouTube. I mean, it's jaw dropping, it's very balanced and very thorough. So I can say at least 27 million people know really what's going on and however many people they've spoken to, you know, that's another group of people that really understand the realities of uh, Ukraine, Russia. So that makes it more difficult to uh, get these uh, narratives and spin to work essentially. So I think we're seeing uh, that, that in part as well. So we'll take now uh, a break on this piece and we're going to carry on for the um, early release for the uh, Patreon subscribers. So if you'd like to carry on watching, please just go and click on Patreon and un unlock this uh, video. Okay, thanks. So now we carry on.